Thank you, thank you very much, and thank you the organizers for uh, for giving us the opportunity to be here today. Me and Enrique Carrillo, that uh, we are going to talk a little bit about food uh, drug interactions and and what we are doing at India Food Institute in this regard, and of course in in FNS Cloud project. And uh, well, why? Because uh, food. Uh, well, I, I I'm trying to to give a view of what we are doing in food reactive compounds in disease. And this is because in chronic diseases such as cancer, that is our, one of the main diseases nowadays in our society, um, several reports that usually, as, as the World Cancer Research Fund, that, that usually talk about the relationship between diet, nutrition and, and the development of the disease. Uh, in the last year, uh, for the first time, they started to talk about the effects of uh, several reactive compounds and several specific uh, food components in the molecular aspects of the development of cancer. So we are really now in uh, the area of molecular nutrition on, on, on how reactive compounds really can affect the development and progression of the disease. So we are talking about precision nutrition, that is uh, the main scope of uh, India Food Institute in what uh, we are working. And as it happened years ago uh, with uh, precision medicine, right now we have to go from general healthy recommendations of, of, of nutritional aspects in, in epidemiological studies, healthy nutrition and body maintenance, to a specific targeted nutritional um, aspects to promote health to, to their molecular um, effects in, in the body. And this is precision nutrition. So what we can expect of precision nutrition, we, we, we are expecting high efficacy of uh, applying uh, food bioactive compounds in disease uh, treatment, prevention and treatment, but um, treatment is one of our main scopes. And uh, we are talking about, uh, for that high efficacy, we have to talk about, uh, of course, our physiology and our clinical status, but also our personal susceptibility and the molecular effects of food reactives. So when we are talking about the molecular effects of food reactives, we are not just uh, talking about the classical nutrigenetic studies, we are going beyond that. And we have to think about uh, genetics, epigenetics, transcriptomics, microbiome, immunity, the metabolic status, nutritional, clonic inflammation, all those aspects in, in our body that are really related to the development of the disease and that are related to nutritional aspects and related to the specific effect that we can find with uh, food bioactives. In the case of cancer, that is one of our main scopes in, in, in the lab, we are um, focused on the deregulation of metabolism because this is one of the molecular hallmarks of cancer and it's really related to, um, to diet as a main risk factor and a main risk factor of disease development and progression. And in addition, we want to go from the epidemiological aspect to a molecular approach to use food bioactives as a complementary approach. We are trying to modulate lipid metabolism as an effect that can be uh, really effective in, in treating cancer. And that is also really related with microbiome and immunity that, uh, for example, in lung cancer, that now uh, immunotherapy is one of the gold standards, is really important to uh, modulate it through nutrition. And of course, it's also an aspect that is really related to other diseases that are related to cancer and, and, and really are affecting our society, like is obesity or metabolic syndrome. So this is our main scope of action. And in addition, we are talking about cancer because uh, the uh, WHO has uh, been saying for a lot of years that a diet can contribute to prevent or treat more than 50% of cancer uh, cases. But the real thing right now is that patients, that patients uh, do not know how to achieve this, this effect and they want to be part of their own treatment. But in, in the real case, patients are usually only treated when a nutritional status is really in, alarm, in an alarming situation. And we also have a, a lot of problems because as patients want to be part of their treatment and, and they 
are trying to investigate uh, about how they can use uh, nutritional supplements and food bioactives to improve their health, they are self-treating them. And uh, they have a devastating results because of drug, food drug interactions. So this is one of the main problems that, that, that we want to address in the Institute and of course inside this project. And uh, to that end, we are working in, in how to apply food bioactives in, in a lot of diseases. This example is about cancer, but, but really uh, we also work in obesity and other diseases. And we, we have uh, addressed two different approaches. On one hand, we're trying to avoid tumor promoting agents. And of course, we have some research lines in, in for example, caloric restriction. But uh, what we are doing here and, and in this project is trying to include protective uh, therapeutic agents and it, there is a strong scientific evidence of how bioactive effectiveness, uh, how we can fight effectiveness with bioactives as complementary therapeutic approaches. But it's really uh, relevant and, and really necessary to know that we are not um, interacting with the current treatment of, of these patients. To that end, how we are approaching the use of food bioactives in disease, where we are trying to approach uh, it as um, it, it is usually done for drug, drug screening and drug developing, the development. So we are, uh, and we are working with metabolic targets because our main scope primarily was to find how to modulate metabolism to improve health and improve metabolic homeostasis and, and cancer and inhibiting uh, cancer progression. So we worked with uh, several clinical samples in which uh, different omic techniques were applied uh, in transcriptomics, genomics, proteomics, metabolomics, metagenomics, of course, in order to identify uh, different population subgroups according to lipid metabolism. And um, we have we have published uh, several papers trying to approach this issue and trying to identify different uh, metabolic profiles in which different food bioactives could be uh, approached. And in the case of bioactives, what we are doing is, is, is uh, following the same approach of drug screening. Of course, we are not isolating the, the compound, the chemical compound, and uh, making the drug. We're just working with the natural compounds. But as a first step of the screening, we are just uh, looking for their effect in these molecular targets in lipid metabolism. So we're trying to modulate metabolism that is important in, in cancer, but also in, in other chronic diseases, such as obesity and metabolic syndrome, as I mentioned before. Our uh, second approach is all the preclinical aspects uh, both in vitro and in, vi and in vivo in animal models that um, is uh, regarding their effect in disease, but of course we're taking in a, into account their interactions with, with the different drugs that are uh, usually used in the different types of cancer that we are uh, approaching. Then uh, when we have the hits, uh, we go to clinical trials Taking into account that uh, these are food components, uh, it's really easy to go to clinical trials because we don't have, um, or we usually don't have toxicity. We have these components ap approved to go to clinical trials. And what we have done is uh, trying to formulate them uh, to increase bioaccessibility and bioactivity. And then when we have demonstrated that they're fed in, in healthy volunteers, then we go to the different subgroups of cancer patients. So that this is our main approach. And as an example, I'm, I'm just uh, going to talk a little bit about a compound that is called rosmalip. Rosmalip is based on deter pens from, from rosemary extract, the superclinical fluid rosemary extract, that we have made all this uh, cl preclinical data to uh, see that they are really a good approach for cancer treatment, that they are that this compound is inhibiting our lipid metabolism target and it's uh, having a synergistic effect with several antitumoral agents like uh, fluoropyridines, but, but we have observed with other agents. 
Then we have gone to uh, develop uh, targeted nutritional formulations in collaboration with uh, the uh, Universidad Autónoma of Madrid and the Hospital Infanta Sofia of Madrid also. And these nutritional um, formulations, of course, since they come from natural stress, they have several advantages, such as the low toxicity that I mentioned before, but uh, they also had a, a, a main a disadvantage that it was that uh, these formulations, usually these extracts, natural extracts, are not uh, highly bioaccessible to the cells, so they really don't usually reach the targets. And uh, we have developed um, a patent in which we applied a lipid vehicle system, a self-emulsifying system, to increase uh, their bioaccessibility. And then uh, we have applied this compound uh, as an example of what we are doing in, in, in healthy volunteers in the Genial platform of clinical trials in nutritional health, that, that is a, a platform of India Food Institute. And here in these volunteers, that 80 volunteers so were are, we are, um, taking, well, 40 the compound and 40 the, the placebo. And what we observed is that these metabolic genes uh, were really uh, inhibited in, in the volunteers that were taking the, drug, the compound, the food compound. And uh, we also observed an enhanced innate immunity that was expected by the effect of rosemary extracts, but also because of this lipid vehicle that is based on alkylglycerols that, that also are inducing um, an enhanced immunity, um, innate immunity of the volunteers. And uh, this um, effect, this molecular effect, uh, drove us not only to go to cancer patients that it was uh, initially designed, because in that moment we went through a COVID-19 pandemic, and um, really this enhancement of innate immunity could be really important for cancer patients that are at increased risk of the development of uh, infections. So uh, COVID-19 was one of these infections that could be affecting more these oncological patients. So we are right now undergoing a clinical trial uh, using uh, this precision nutrition supplement that is a precision nutrition supplement because it's affecting a specific uh, aspects of lipid metabolism and immunity. And uh, right now we have 90 patients that are enrolled in the study. And uh, the primary objective of, of this study is uh, to observe the effect of this compound in inhibiting infection, not only by COVID-19, COVID but also a lot of infections that usually happens in, in oncological patients. And at the secondary objective, we also have um, to observe this uh, synergistic effect that we observed in the preclinical studies with the antitumoral treatments. And uh, we, of course, have to follow these uh, food drug interactions and, of course, the, effect, uh, the effects in, in lipid profile of the patients and how these effects are affecting the quality of life and, and their response to treatment. And uh, finally, Another um, another program in which we are enrolled that is uh, really uh, taking into account food drug interactions is uh, called the Aliver program. The Aliver program uh, is a consortium of uh, seven different groups of the community of Madrid in Spain, in which uh, several hospitals and, and research groups are working together to design and clinically validate the effect of targeted bioactives for cancer patients. Uh, one of them is, is this uh, rosemary leaf that I talked before, but we have another compounds that are undergoing this, this uh, development. And uh, we are also developing an mHealth platform to uh, follow side effects of the treatments and the, the interactions with the, with the nutritional strategies and the food uh, bioactives that we are applying to the patients. And of course, all uh, lifestyle related factors uh, taking into account that nutrition, uh, sleep and physical activity are the, the main scopes that are being uh, followed in these patients. And we have here an, um, a mobile app uh, for the patients for them to register all the effects that they are observing in their body. 
We also have a web application uh, platform for uh, with, with two different areas, one for researchers to know how these biomarkers, microbiome, genetics, and, and, and all that we are including are affecting these patients, and another for the oncologist in which an alert regarding the side effects are, are taking them to, to visit the patients if, if it's needed. And, uh, and this uh, project is it's really relevant in relation with this um, project FNS Cloud project because uh, we really um, are convinced that uh, treatment with food bioactives can be um, a complement, a very effective complement in the treatment of several diseases. But of course, it's uh, really important to uh, take them into account with their current treatment. So uh, food drug interactions is it's one of uh, the main scope of actions of this project that I've mentioned before. So I, I just give the word. Well, I, I first would like to thank all the hospitals that are involved in the study that we are taking uh, and rolling right now in, in, in their food institute in this regard. That are these main three, uh, Hospital Infanta Sofia, La Pata, Fundación Fumenepiat, all the funding sources, and uh, of course the clinical oncology group, uh, the genial platform of clinical trials in nutritional health, my group and my molecular oncology group, and the computational biology group in which we are uh, going uh, deeper in these food drug interactions in which Enrique Carroyo is now um, going to follow our activity in, in this project. Thank you, and Enrique, please, you can follow with the presentation. Well, thank you very much for this opportunity to be in this meeting with so many Guman leaders. I think that I'm one of the main representatives with Paul, but I'm very proud to be here today. And as Anna said, we are very interested in this work and in FNC Cloud, and we are working on it, mainly related in food drug uh, interactions, trying to combine many data sets. At Anna, Told us before, it's important that we develop uh, bioactics in our center to see how they can interact with different with different drugs. In the case, for example, of cancer, patients, or obesity, or other things that the people is, is taking. This is a, a, a news paper. This is a, a, that appeared some years ago in Spain. This story, this is in Spanish, but I want to tell you a bit what is the problem that they tackle. And they describe how a patient of cancer, a, a doctor of cancer, they were very frustrating when, the, when the, um, the patient, after the end chemotherapy session, revealed to the, to the doctors that she was following a uh, well, diet. Uh, she is taking supplements with curcumin. And they know that curcumin is interacting with uh, different chemotherapies that makes invalid the treatment that she was living uh, during, during, uh, during many, many weeks. And of course, you can imagine when at the end of all this process, the doctors identify that they didn't provide enough information to the patient and the patients have taken some uh, decisions about how to improve her uh, health, uh, going to a uh, shopping, uh, looking for supplements that can improve her immunity or her health or whatever. But then, as she is trying to do the best that she can, uh, the, the selection that she does is going to need it, the, the treatment that she is following. You, know? you can imagine that this is for frustra very frustrating for both sides, for the patient side and for the doctor side. Uh, of course, this is only one case that I'm sure that is happening in many cases, not only in cancer, many with other, uh, with other, other treatments too. Um, but there are some, some, some reviews and some, some articles that they say that Usually, one third of the cancer patients are taking some complementary medicine. 90% of these are related with, with food supplements. Uh, one of the most used is curcumin, that, as I told you, is very dangerous for, for cancer patients. And then we know that 60% of adverse drug reactions are due to herbal supplements that people is taking outside of the, of the knowledge of the doctor or the nutritionist that are treating the, them. Of course, not all of these are so dangerous. We are starting to know and we are starting to investigate some supplements that can really enhance the treatment and can really put it in favor of the treatment of the patients. And that is really important. We have to see, although what is much more dangerous, as we told before, is things that are not working properly when we are taking some food supplements, although we think that they have a very healthy property. 
and this is really very important. What happens at the end? What are the main problems of this? We know that the drugs and the food supplements can interact between them across the metabolism, absorption, distribution, elimination, of course, with affecting the microbiome, affecting the host cells, affecting the immunology, and other biological paths. But what's happened? Why this is so frustrating for so many people in both sides? Because there's no dedicated system for food drug interactions. The solution that we have found are drug drug interactions. Some of them, they contain some interaction between food and, um, and drugs, but most of the cases, they are not really so much overlap between the different solutions that they have. The information about this is dispersed are usually incomplete. Of course, there is an increase of consumption of food with active role to prevent non-communicable disease, and there are increased effects with increasing health costs, as we, I told you before. No? That means that this is a big problem that we have to face in the news, in the, we are facing now, but we have to face much more in the news in the news years. That means that what we need is systems that help us to provide the good information for the patient, for the doctor, and then to provide good research about how this food or supplement that we research in the lab can really interact with the drugs in, the, in those patients or in those diseases that we want to, to prevent. Of course, one thing that we can do from the molecular side, we are bioinformaticians and we are from the molecular side, uh, you know, the Human Genome Project, I, I take the opportunity to say that this year was the 20 years that we had the first draft for the Human Genome Project, having generated a lot of data, a lot of molecular data from many aspects, metabolic, genomics, uh, transcriptomics, genomics, many, many things, that although clearly they were not thinking to use it in food or, or health, they can be reanalyzed and reused to try to provide much more information. And this is what we are doing. We are trying to take different databases. For example, one of these is GEO. GEO is uh, the highest database about molecular data on transcriptomics. Then we have connectivity map. You have here around 1.5 million of gene expression profiles for drugs and for gene not downs and gene overexpression. And then we have many data sets uh, like Final Explorer, Food Data Bank, Food Data, uh, and others that are around about food information. That means that we can compile all these, all these databases. That is one of the objectives of FNS Cloud, try to combine these different, different platforms and, and data sets to get new information that could have some insight and could be useful for, for, for a purpose. Here, what we are doing is, okay, we are taking these uh, food databases, we are mining geodatabase, trying to get all the uh, experiments, molecular experiments that they have taken uh, for different reasons. Uh, at the end, we get it almost 100 data sets with around 300 compounds for different conditions from microarrays, rna and different objects. We calculate the different transcriptomic profiles for each com bioactive compound, and then we must deal with the connectivity map. That, as I told you, this is to know, uh, this is about drugs, uh, molecular profiling. At the end, we are going to have different uh, scores. We are considering if they are higher than 90, that they are going to be uh, similar actions at the molecular level. If they have minus 19, we are going to say that they are going to have uh, different actions and maybe they could have some uh, antagonist actions between them. At the end of the day, what we have building is a, is a network where we relate the food bio compounds with the drug compounds. We have many different interactions that we have identified, positive and negative. We check with drug bank that they are a database for drug, drug interactions. They have, as I told you, some food drug interactions. We identify 40, 42% of them, and it's a good number. And then we have a high number that is yet in the, in the place to research, that we need to know, go on deeper, to see what is happening and is they are really true interaction are they are producing any any effect or not. But this is what we have now. And what we can do, one researcher can be interesting to say, okay, what what type of drugs is going to be similar resveratrol, for example? No? That means that we can do enrichment analysis and we can say that when we do this, the, the, the drugs that is related with the resveratrol are going to be related with cancer, with multi-kinase inhibitors, antineoplastic, with inhibitors and others. I mean, that maybe can really enhance the effects of this, of this, of this factor. No? This is something that is well known in the, in, the, in the literature that is good for us because that means that our network has uh, validated already uh, knowledge that we know. 
we can see the network from the other side. We can take, for example, NF-kappa, NF-kappa uh, data inhibitors uh, to see what components can have similar effects. In this case, we identify flavonoids, and we can identify supplements from microbiome, like urolithin 1A. That is good, too, because we find this kind of relationship in the, in the literature. And then we can do other things. We can try to see, okay, if we take the drugs that are related with one component, if we have two components with different structure, maybe we can relate them uh, depending of the of the drugs that they can that they can uh, be like them in a positive or in a negative way. No, in this case we have the example of genistein that have similar effects that drugs that are related with hydroxypyroxol or hydroxypyroxyphenyl, although they have different different structures. At the end of the day, what we have is a platform where we can ask for one of our favorite components or interesting components. We can provide those information where we get the data. And of course, we can do this kind of analysis. What kind of drugs they are going to interact, positive or negative? We can see uh, there's an overrepresentation about some mechanistics, uh, mechanistic of actions in mesh terms, the drug bank, the chemicals. We can see there are enrichment in MAP case inhibitors or mTOR. Or we can see communities of, of, of bioactives that can have similar profiles following the, the, the the drugs that we have assigned. Of course, this is something that we are compiling now inside of the Vanessa Cloud. We have the databases, we have the, the results. If any of you are interested, you can contact us and we can, and we can provide those information. Now, what we are trying to do is to create a platform, a web platform that, of course, you don't need to be a bioinformatician or you don't need to have skills in programming to get all this data and all this information. What we are going to try is to put all this information available for all the researchers that are interested in an easy, um, findable way uh, with, of course, linking all the results with many results that can give you much more insight in the case that you want to, to do this. This is one part of what we are doing in FS Cloud. Other thing that we are doing is to compile from clinical reports and clinical trials uh, what we already know from these fat and drug interactions to create a, a, another uh, tool for, for, for nutritionists and, and doctors that they can really get inside of this info very easy. That means that when you, when a doctor is going to do the drug, he knows or she knows that should give a list of food or the active compound that should not be taken with that. And the other way around for the nutritionist. When a nutritionist is going to give a uh, bioactive compounds or a food supplements, they need to know what drugs are incompatible with those. This is our job. This is what we are doing. I have to say that the most work have done by Marco and Teresa, members of the computational biology team, and leading from the biological and clinical part from Anna and from Isabel in the Genial Clinical Trial Platform that help us with ideas, with how to refine this, how to improve, and what are really the problems with a nutritionist is in front of a patient or, or a volunteer. Uh, and they don't know what to do, what to do or where, where to look for this kind 